Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. Can you hear me? Yeah. How y'all doing? Great. I'm Angie. I'm Belinda. Are y'all ready for this? Five years in the making. It's time for a LaFerry panel. Please welcome to the stage Caitlin Alexander and Annie Briggs. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it's taken five years for a LaFerry panel? No. No. <laughs> What's up with that? I don't know. What is up with that? Well, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Since this is your first con experience together, I think, well, other than Fan Expo a couple times. And love con, yes. And love con. Yeah. Well, okay. Then yeah, how yeah. is Carmilla con going? Um, <laughs> How's it been? What's your, been your favorite thing? Um, meeting everybody and like getting to hug them and saying like how much they mean to me. That's been the best part for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just an incredible opportunity. We were talking about this earlier to sort of allow for space for you guys to really show up and and just sort of express what this fandom and what the show has meant to you. And it's, in, it's an incredible thing to be on the other side and receive that and just, and just listen, basically. Just hold space for that. It's, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. You guys have been great. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Carmilla. It's kind of mm -hmm. why we're here. <laughs> what would you say you miss most about working on Carmilla? <laughs> <laughs> um, Annie's back of the throat laughs in scenes where we weren't supposed to be laughing and then it looked like I was the person that was laughing so hard. That's what I miss the most. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, we've uh, collectively, I think, spoken about this before, but it's, it's the collection of people. It was that we had such a great cast and crew and creative team and um, it just, it really was truly a special thing and I, I think that um, that showed up in terms of what we were able to translate uh, on screen across the board. So yeah, I'd, I'd work with that collection of folks again in a heartbeat. It was amazing. Is Shasbury listening somewhere? Like, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, so in your head canon, yes. what is happening with LaFerry today? What's, what's head can, what's canon, what's head canon? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what? In your imagination, uh -huh. in your imagination, what would LaFerry be up to today? Oh, right, okay. You can go first. What would the fairy be up to? Okay, so like where we saw them, they had their company at the end of the film. Yes. Um, yes, I'm an employee now. Yes, yes. we are both yeah, employees of yes, the fairy yes. industries. Yeah. Oh, I, I think they're their boss bitches. <laughs> that, yeah, that absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think they're they're uh, multimillionaires. <laughs> <laughs> they have several houses, um, yeah. but they only live in the same house at the same time. They're very frugal still. It's weird. Um, yeah. And then like sometimes laugh just brings home a ghost, and it's awkward for everyone. <laughs> yeah, but then like Perry still bakes uh, a welcoming treat, and they they acclimatize the ghost into the space, and yeah. You know, standard stuff. Me, totally. I, think, yeah. I think it would be funny if they were like foster parents, but for ghosts to help mm. them like transition onward to their perma home later. You know what I mean? I think, I think they think work. That works. Head yeah. canon accepted. Yeah. There. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, looking at your characters, how, how would you say you relate most to them, and how do you think you're most different from your character? Which characters for it? For <laughs> any of them? Well, so so fairy, so panel. Perry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm, um, it, I don't know what, ooh. Laugh is better at words than me, for sure. Um, I think I relate now most to Laugh's, like, um, outspokenness. I didn't used to be like that, but playing Laugh over the years really helped me find my voice. So I think, like, I, over the years I became more like Laugh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I touched on this the other day in the group panel, but um, Perry's controlling nature sometimes I do see in myself uh, not for better um, but yeah just her her need to sort of control her environment and then I think the biggest difference between us there are many would would just be like her baseline energy and her nervousness I I, I don't really relate to so much You're much more chill <laughs> relaxed yeah I'm like I'm pretty <laughs> chilly <laughs> mostly that's good 
That wouldn't describe you. That would not describe you. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about no, me, no. so. Uh, all right. Good, though. Yeah. I have another headcanon question for you. I'm sorry. Um, what is uh, your character's Hogwarts house? And what is your Hogwarts house? Hogwarts is a Harry Potter thing. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think... You, you might have to uh, answer. Oh, yeah. I, I, I won't answer for you because I want to see you try this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mean! <laughs> um, I think Laugh is obviously a Ravenclaw because, like, yes. And uh, I'm a secret Slytherin. Surprise. Uh. <laughs> Barry's a uh, Hufflepuff, in, in <laughs> my uh, opinion. <clears throat> and uh, I am a Slytherin, in my opinion. <laughs> Nailed it. Thank you for sharing your opinion. Yes. <laughs> Much appreciated. Thank you. So for this next one, we can keep it PG or not. Your call. Great. So, I can't wait to see where this goes. Seeing as Laugh and Perry often interrupt Laura and Carmilla, mm -hmm. if the roles were reversed mm -hmm. and Laura and Carmilla were interrupting the two of you, what do you think you would be doing? Some weird shit. A hundred percent some weird shit. Yeah, take that, uh, how you Will, You've got I my headcanon. Probably going. to a soundtrack of heavy rap. <laughs> wow. Just to the window to the wall on repeat. <laughs> headcanon accepted. Um, <laughs> sorry. Serious now. In season three, Laura played a game of Scrabble to defeat a death goddess. If you had to defeat, a death goddess in a game, what game would you choose? Oh, I'd lose no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what game would I choose? Uh, Overcooked, but that's a video game, but like, it would be Overcooked because I just don't think that anyone else would know how to play it. I don't know. Okay, well then you'd beat me if you were the god, so there we go. <laughs> um, I feel like I, I just go straight for like, uh, contact football. <laughs> or something, and I just charge at them with all my humanly weight and rage <laughs> and take them down. Okay. Getting some quality answers up here. High, high quality. Um, switching back to your character, how would you describe LaFontaine or Perry in three words? Three words are very complex characters we created. I think it's unfair <laughs> to have to whittle it down after so many five years. Words. <laughs> five no, words. I can, no, with, with five, yeah, we okay. can do three words. Uh, <clears throat> controlling, protective, uh, neurotic, uh, loyal, dangerous, smart. What, see, you guys did it. We got some encouragement. We got there. <laughs> it's, you're up. All right, I'm up. And this is a baseball question, actually. No, no. It actually doesn't have anything to do with baseball. You don't need to know baseball kind. to Yeah, you don't answer. need to know baseball to answer. But Sports? you may have already answered it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, if your character played baseball, what would their walk-up music be? So in baseball, when a... You come up to bat, right? There's music playing. But you have to, you have to put the caveat in for LaFontaine. Oh, and you can't choose weird science. That okay? I have to think. Give me a second. It's okay. I feel the vibe. No pressure. X Files theme song. Oh, that's a good that's one. A good, that's a good one. I don't know what would Perry's be. Something like. But not to the window, to, to the, the wall. wall. No, because that's for other things. <laughs> um, yeah, like something aggressively hip hop. Yeah. Like no. exhibit. <laughs> something right. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And if you had to pick a walk up song for yourself, you're welcome. What would you pick? <laughs> you 
You know the song Help I'm Alive by Metric? Yeah. That, but it's just Help I'm Alive on repeat. <laughs> Rockman enough. <laughs> wow, I like that one. All right. This, Caitlin, this should be a, this should, a softball, if you will, keeping it with. <laughs> I'm just, we're just curious. Was that a real shot collar you were wearing during season three? Uh, I was sh sure not, and I also <laughs> made the noises myself when I was getting shocked, which nobody told me to do. They were like, just like twitch, and I was like, Zzz. and they were like, we're not putting sound in this. Why are you doing this? And I was like, I don't know, I have to. <laughs> that was well was, acted. We thought it was, it was, it was real. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, I would. I would. I mean, I, for your safety, I wouldn't have thought it was real, but you never know. I mean, I'm game for anything. So low, it low budget been. production. <laughs> yeah. No, like it is a very funny thing when you're doing something that's like there won't there's no sound to it and they're like you don't have to do any noise or like but then you kind of like can't do certain actions without vocalizing as well and then you just feel like a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Our job is fun. So if they did make a LaFerry spin-off, what would you want the what do you would you want or what would you think the show would be about? I think foster goat, foster foster ghosts. ghosts, like the Fosters, <laughs> and then in brackets ghosts, ghosts. <laughs> would be the name of it. You and in the spirits, yeah. the and wandering spirits, the wandering you, spirits, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, they just they are raised by us, and then move on to their yeah. afterlife. And it's beautiful and emotional, but also uncomfortable because once an episode, you hear to the window, to the wall, coming from somewhere <laughs> upstairs, Absolutely. and it's just weird. Yes. Yeah. And then every once in a while we do an episode in the style of Great Canadian Baking Show. Yes, or Baking. and everyone's yeah. like, what's this format? And, and like, like, who knows? It got canceled in the first season, but somehow we keep making it. It's like one of those, okay. yeah. I kept th hearing you say foster goats. <laughs> and the weird thing is, is that would still totally work in my head. Uh, well, we have something to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> we sure do. How many times do you think any of us said ghosts in the Carmilla movie? And how many times do you think all we heard on set was people ghosts. running around going, ghosts, ghosts? So before we started any scene in the Carmilla movie to get into character, she would go to my ear and go, goats, ghosts, goats. And then they'd yell action and I'd have to just continue. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm getting a little more serious here. Um, why do you think LaFerry has resonated with so many people? I mean, I'll say off the top, classic dynam dynamic duo, these two, right? But um, I think the two of them support each other in this like really beautiful way. They're sort of yin and yang to, e to e what each other needs. And I think that's what attracts them as soulmates, best friends. You know what I mean? Sort of make up for what each other lacks. And I think that's super relatable to a lot of individuals. You have that person in your life that you're the polar opposite from and of, but that you still need in your life to sort of fulfill that void. Yeah. Yeah, there's a really good serious answer, and I'm going to come in with. Also, who hasn't been secretly in love with their best friend? <laughs> you know, there's that. <laughs> Yours is better. <laughs> so we'll go a little less serious. <laughs> You're stranded in the anglerfish pit, and you can only bring three things with you. What do you bring? Like me. Yes, you don't have to answer as your character. <sighs> okay. Annie and Caitlin. A pound of chocolate-covered almonds. Um, only a pound? Yeah, I gotta keep my waist fit, you know? <laughs> uh, like, sunscreen, in case there's sunbeams. And a sleeping blanket, cause like, put me in that hole, I'm good. <laughs> what? That was weird. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Someone cancel me, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I would bring uh, I would bring uh, a bottle of gin, um, a, a a parasol because again because it's sun damage, um, 
And then, <laughs> unlike you, I, I, would, ask, I would bring a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good answer. Thank you. <laughs> I have so much empathy for you on set now. <laughs> Thanks. Right? It's like unrelenting. I'm horrible. <laughs> it's good, though. I'm, I'm laughing, so it's good. All right. I've, uh, we had some uh, questions from fans. Uh, Gloria from Texas asks... What would Perry make Loft dress up for as Halloween and vice versa? Mm. Okay. I think... <laughs> 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 uh, like, this could go in so many ways, but I just, I think that, so Perry has this, this collection of characters, <laughs> like entirely unrelated to me and myself, um, of uh, hip hop vegetables, and I think um, Perry would would want so Perry would dress up as like broccolicious, let's say, and then um, require laugh to go as um, I think Bok Choy the b boy, <laughs> or Baba G the eggplant DJ. <laughs> Caitlin, yeah, I'm following that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that um, Laugh would make Perry dress up as Kim Possible and they would be Ron Stoppable and then <laughs> they'd go around and have to fight crime together. Either that or Perry would want to go as like two of the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> but, which two? Be like, no. <laughs> but, but which two? Let, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Who do we think? Barry? I think Barry would probably. Hmm. Who's the uh, the mother? Who's the mother? Sophia. 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 I think Barry's yeah. Sophia. For sure. And laugh. I don't know. Who's the suitor? Did, remember that? Oh, Blanche. Sh no, 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 oh, no, no, no. One of the ladies has like a gentleman caller who comes around. I'm the gentleman caller. Yeah, <laughs> great. great. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Right, right, right. Yeah, Stan. I'm the ex-husband. Golden Girls is a sitcom from the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> so we also have a question uh, from Joe from Scotland. And he wants to know, if the fairy went on vacation, where would they go and what would they do? They're conferring. No pressure, we're good. I'm sorry. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Okay, I love that. Let's share with the class. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, class. Um, well, certainly nowhere where there's sun, because no. look at us. Um, <laughs> so, I, I think they'd head uh, up to the deep north. Um, yeah. Yep, certainly above the tree line. Yeah. And uh, uh, Perry would be there exploring the uh, culinary arts of the Arctic while laugh. Uh, does science and also probably ice dives a lot, but they shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. No, they really shouldn't. But they will. But they will. So we're going to switch gears here a little bit. Got it. We're going to give you a little lightning round. Oh, no. <laughs> there, you are answering as Annie and Caitlin. Oh, thank cool. God. Okay. So, um, and to character. So we, earlier we did an either or, but we, we're, you know, we're asking your favorites. Okay. So I'll get us started. Something in your favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite book? Uh, Intentional Dissonance. It's a book by Ian Thomas. It's very good. If you have a chance to read it, I would. Just Kids by Patti Smith. What is your favorite word? But. <laughs> I panicked. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stuff. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> movie. Movie? Movie. Carmilla movie. <laughs> uh, uh, 
it's you can't not one. There's not one. You horrors, you horrors. <laughs> um, I horrors, not. <laughs> it's all good. We're fine. H o r r o r. Um, uh, with nail and I. For my British friends. Favorite story cliche. Best friends who fall in love with each other. Ditto. <laughs> Favorite snack. <laughs> PG-13 or not. <laughs> I like Doritos. <laughs> cool, I like chewing on raw cacao beans. <laughs> really? Yeah, the, it tastes like bitter dirt, and I love it. <laughs> did, did you ever try those ketchup Doritos? I did. They were incredible. Oh, they were. I have dreams about them sometimes. Shouldn't have shared that. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> Favorite Canadian stereotype? A. Oh, fucking hoser and plaid by, like, it's I'd probably plaid. Plaid, because uh, I legit love plaid. That like we know how to chop wood and shit. <laughs> I like that people think that about me. It's not true. It's the plaid. It's the plaid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just got back from Disney Cruise, so this is inspired by that. Um, favorite Disney character? Mulan. Yeah. Ursula the Sea Witch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Favorite hobby? Knitting. Ooh. Cross stitching. <laughs> Favorite song to dance to? You can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. There you go. There's a song called Tous les Mêmes by Stromae, and I really like to dance to that song, even though it's completely in French. Speaking of French, um, I think the, the latest, which is a, it's a little old now, but um, the latest album from Christine and the Queens is like, fucking dance a bull. <laughs> so yeah, that'll get me moving. All right. And feel free to, the next one, you can practice on each other. Favorite pickup line? I feel like usually my tactic is like non-verbal off the top, so. <clears throat> <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Are you a mirror? Because I see myself with you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I think we're going to move on to the next part of the panel. Uh, so we have to thank Christine, who submitted a little bit of a script that we're gonna, we're all ready? Oh yeah, just let me, let me get into character. Okay, <laughs> you let me know when you're ready. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I, I need to reorient my phone, hold on. You know the story's called reorientation. <laughs> so this is, so this is post-season three, pre-movie? That's correct. Heck yes. Yeah. Okay. And the place and yeah. oh, sorry. Go. is somewhere spooky. Spooky. <laughs> Laugh and Perry are in the middle of investigating something supernatural. It's not going great. Both of them throw their weight against a door, trying to keep a monster inside. What did I just say? You think with your fancy new eye, you're always bragging about your photographic memory. The door's not going to hold for long. I can recite all of our case files word for word, Perry. Isn't that neat? And you never remember to sweep under the couch, even though it's right there on the chore wheel. The chore wheel takes up the entire fridge. It's a chore <laughs> Ferris wheel. It's an abomination. <laughs> you said you like the chore wheel. The monster roars. Lop takes out some fancy gadget and points it at the monster through the crack in the door, taking aim. I would like it a lot more if you would let me know you were making it, but it just appeared one day, demanding that I deep clean the carpet twice a month. You never tell me things. Well, I would tell you things if you took them seriously. Laugh shoots the monster. Goo splatters all over their face. 
With Perry's help, they managed to get the door shut. That should keep it quiet for a while. Well, to jog that perfect memory of yours, what did I say five seconds ago was, don't touch anything. Do you remember that? Right before you touched literally everything? I'm supposed to touch things. I'm a scientist. What do you think science is? Loft touches their face. Cool. Monster goo. Not the prettiest way to get a DNA sample of this guy, but I'll take it. Oh, it's everywhere here. Perry takes out a handkerchief and reaches to wipe some of the goo from near Laugh's eye. Laugh jerks away. What? What? Well, let me get it off. No, I like it. It's my new look. Why are you, <laughs> why are you being so weird? I think this is a pretty standard amount of weird for me. Behind the door, the monster roars. Uh, let's just let it out. One more blast could do the trick. Um, absolutely not. No, would you just let me? Really? Shh. Really? Still? Yes, still. <sighs> okay, there was an ancient god squatting inside my cerebellum. I don't know if you can poss how you can possibly blame me. I don't. For if we could just sit down and talk about this, then you'd know. If you don't blame me, then why do you keep treating me like your vampire friends would treat a particularly nasty clove of garlic? Because it was still your hand. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm loving the bionic eye, but your hand did that to me. My brain knows it wasn't you, but my body hasn't quite gotten the memo. You can relate to that, right? You had a pretty serious brain-body disconnect of your own for a while there. A beat. The monster roars. Perry, touches la Perry tosses laugh the handkerchief. Well, you should still clean it up. I'm not having you leaving gunky footprints all over my house. Again with the not telling me things. Okay, if I had a dollar for every time you've made me talk about this nonsense, we wouldn't have to play Scooby-Doo for a living. If you count talking as saying, I'm fine, 20 times, and then baking like a concerning amount of snickerdoodles. You said you liked the snickerdoodles. <laughs> I can't win with you. Uh, the snickerdoodles were concerningly amazing, and I'll always be happy to eat more, but my point is, whenever you get close to actually talking about the Dean, you just stress big. Okay, can we, like, not do this in front of the goo monster? Was it like being in a coma? Did you know where you were? LaFontaine, I want you to think about what we have going for us right now. A stableish job, a significant lack of, uh, you know, madness in, in each other. Yeah? So, is that all going to magically disappear if you tell me what it was like to have that raging witch in your head? Yes. In fact, I, I think it will. The monster pounds on the door, starting to fracture the wood. Fine, but j just so you know, until you tell me, I'm going to keep picturing you and the Dean being wacky roommates. I love the odd couple. Roommates? Perry snaps. The roar gets louder. Right. Sorry, taking things seriously. I'm surprised you've been so hell-bent on making me talk about this, considering you're clearly such a possession expert. Well, Lita Morgan and I were a regular pair of sitcom stars. You know that classic TV trope where a demon lady spends the better part of a year telling you how much she despises you? She talked to you? Using my voice, which was a fun cherry on the whole nightmare Sunday. I'm sure I can give you a taste of what it's like. She only borrowed my larynx for, oh, eight months. My God. Where in this waste of a world did you find these clothes? The moth-ridden evidence room of the fashion police? You know, in all the eons of my existence, I don't think I've ever encountered a creature quite as average as you. It's extraordinary how average you are. Lola, darling, do you ever stop to think, really think, about the fact that the object of all this pathetic pining decided that you were less dateable than a freaking flash drive? The door erupts open, the monster roaring triumphantly. Perry grabs Loft's gadget, gunning the monster down with three seasons worth of pent-up anger. Goo splatters on them both. They take a second to process. Wait. I knew it. I knew this would happen. You open the door just a crack, and the monster comes barreling out. I like JP. You know that, right? Uh, sh sure. And look, I... I know this isn't mutual, that's fine, uh, really. And, and uh, you know, I don't want to make things weird y more than our standard uh, amount of It's weird. mutual, it, it's mutual. Oh my God, I thought you didn't. What, no, no I've I've always. I've always. Since when? Like, I don't know, first day of second grade? <laughs> oh, oh, my, my mom put me in those pigtails on the first day. I remember that. And maybe second day of second grade. <laughs> We're so We're stupid. so stupid. <laughs> 
I mean, that's on you. You're supposed to be the smart one. Like, astronomically stupid. 20 plus years of friendship and it took getting slime, but whatever that thing was to get the gaydar working. <laughs> Speaking of which, <clears throat> you should, um, you should really just wipe your, wipe your face. <laughs> Decades long crushes aside, this isn't your cutest look. You wanna do the honors? Really? Sure, it's, uh, it's like exposure therapy. Hmm. How romantic. <laughs> Perry gently wipes some of the goo off Laugh's face. Laugh still jerks away, but considerably less. <laughs> How's it look? Uh, not great, but, but better. I'll take better. And scene. And scene. <laughs> well done, well done. Thank you so much to the to the Yeah, the writer. The writer. Yes. Yeah, Christine did a great job. Yes. Okay, we're gonna open it up to some audience questions. There's an anglerfish coming. <laughs> oh my God. With Run. a light. Hey, uh, Hi. my name's Sophia. Um, okay, so I find, uh, I find La Fontaine's journey in season three to be super fascinating because uh, they chose the harder objective to get rid of the Dean. Um, and what I find interesting about the ending is that they didn't, they weren't successful at their objective, like personally, they didn't fail either, but they but they didn't succeed, and I and that that uh, speaks to me. <laughs> and so I was wondering if Laura was disarmed or killed in some way and couldn't do the power hug when Lafontaine got up from being blinded. Um, would Lafontaine would their um, survival instinct kick in and kill? Um, Perry's body with the Dean inside or would they have given their own life? They would have 100% given their own life. There is not a situation in this world where Laugh would ever harm Perry, regardless of if the Dean was in her body. Cool, thank yeah. you so much. Speaking of that, while somebody else comes up, I have another question yeah. um, as fans. Um, there was a little controversy at the end of uh, season three about um, that. Laf <laughs> about that. that. Yeah, I think we all know. Um, <laughs> um, how was that? How did you guys deal with with that that final scene? I mean, you had nothing to do with it. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I will say I the the challenge really lay in the fact that we had so, so little time shooting these things. Um, and it, it felt uh, difficult for us, but I think the point was the, fin the final moment of the series really wanted to focus in on Laura and Carm and sort of them and having us bopping you, around you in the background. wouldn't have wanted us there. I, don't, I think it would have <laughs> been confusing and, and sort of distracting from their mm -hmm. final moment. So honestly, it was sort of, it was a way to, to move us out and the, the best that we could sort of manage to do that in a way that felt, in a sense, organic was just like the trauma that they were dealing with is like going to get help, right? I for mean, laugh, Laugh's basically. eye was, was bleeding. Like bleeding. It was out, a gushing so. hole. I think they needed to get help for themselves <laughs> too, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and in my head also, they're off getting help for other people. For and other Laura, people. And who Laura is clearly yeah. very injured. Yeah. yeah, somebody Just, needs to come help. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that happens when you have your heart ripped out. Does Literally. it? Yeah. I I, 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 it tracks. It tracks that it right? works. Yeah. I think so. Okay, we have another question. Uh, Annie, my question is just for you. Uh, are you over Caitlin calling you a beautiful, talented asshole? <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Hello, I am wondering um, if you two have any idea about what uh, La Fontaine coming out to Perry looked like, like coming out as non-binary. I think we sort of like mulled over during 
pre preseason pre, one we talked preseason pre 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 previous to shooting each season we would sort of sit down and, and sort talk. of yeah chat about backstory and what was happening in between and I think we had a couple little options <laughs> about mm -hmm. what did. that moment looked like and and even their initial meetings and stuff like that so yeah so we have options for how it could look but we don't know for sure um I think like it would have just been like Perry just asking so many questions and laugh just coming with like a presentation because they know <laughs> that Perry's gonna be like I don't I don't what do you mean, they? And they're like, here's how you use it in a sentence. <laughs> you know, yeah. And like workbooks and stuff. You yeah. Know? yeah, workbooks and, you know, school. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. 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 Uh, I was wondering if y'all had any ideas about, like, things that Laugh and Perry would have done, like, as they were kids together, growing up together, if there was anything that y'all have ever thought about that um, Laugh and Perry would have done together. I think they went to band camp every summer together. <laughs> <laughs> but what instruments did they yes, play? Good so question. Un unsuccessfully. Like probably. so badly. Like uh, Laugh was given every opportunity for every single instrument, but they hurt themselves no matter what they played. So they just got a triangle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perry was the conductor. For 100%. sure. She's oh like, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very serious about the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Oh, Hi. wow, that's loud. Um, <laughs> what are your personal character backstories that you created for you? What like, are our personal backstories that we created? Your, yeah, for your characters. Um, I think we actually like created our backstories together before we shot the first season. We, I remember sitting down with you and being like, so we've been best friends since grade two? Cool. We are obviously in love with each other. Cool. Um, I think, like, laugh just, like, because you had those, like, in season zero, Perry is a very different person. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I think, like, laugh and Perry are diametrically opposed, and therefore we're never in classes together, ever. But they hung out every day together at lunch. And that's the biggest backstory I have, was that they just like eating lunch together. Did yeah, Perry I mean make they met. The lunch? So was that? Did Perry make the lunch? One hundred percent. Very, very healthy. Um, no refined sugar. Uh, yeah, I think I because they met so the two of them met so young. I think uh, we we had some cute sort of schoolyard, um, you know, as a good meeting ground kind of circumstances and things like that that came up. But and I yeah. have this image of laugh with pigtails at some point. I don't know why, but I just like I can see it in my brain and it's awful. And so miserable about it. So miserable about it. Just like the saddest Pippi Longstocking you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. So my question is, what was your favorite season filming together? And what scene was your favorite? Ooh. Ooh. I really liked season one. And I really liked... Um, filming the scene when Laugh is just like out of their mind and like Perry's just freaking out about it. That was really fun because you had got to do your freak out earlier in that season and I got to be like, what's up? And all I remember <laughs> is that particular time Spencer was like, so you're hearing rave music in your head. And I was like, Yes. So the entire time we were shooting that scene, I was just like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you can see me dancing if you look close enough. <laughs> I think that's my favorite season of film. Yeah, there was something really fun about that establishing first season because we were sort of like laying the, and, and we didn't even know it at the time, but laying the foundation for the relationship between the two of them. And then I think from that point, we, we saw them individually tackling their own journeys, which was really incredible and exciting. But I think that first season was, was sort of the core of establishing them together, mm -hmm. which really informs so much about them as individuals. So yeah, I would say the first season as well. And what about the movie? What was your favorite scene in the movie? Dancing, because you love <laughs> dancing with me so much. I was so awful. <laughs> I have never seen Kate sweat more bullets. <laughs> 
in their life, and that's saying a lot. And there was like a hundred candles in that room, so you can imagine how that looked. She was looking at me, and this is what my eyes looked like. <laughs> Just sheer panic sheer the whole time. It was, so, I, th I, I think I just had to like whisper sweet nothings to you the entire you did. time. Like, you're fine, you're fine. You're we're like, one, two, you're fine. fine. You're okay. We can do this. You've got this. <laughs> Thanks. No problem, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi there. I just wanted to ask if, in this scenario, LaFontaine got possessed by the Dean instead of Perry? I, I mean, yeah, did uh, I say it right? Yes, yes I love okay. that scenario. But like, what, 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 what? happened? What? What? <laughs> oh, God. What do we do? Do you want to hear my Dean voice? Because it ain't I good. I kind of want to hear <laughs> it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Please. Um, let me give, me, give me a Dean something. What would a Dean say? It's gonna be one hell of a summer. <laughs> Nobody wanted that. <laughs> and now you see why Annie did it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we have another question for you. Yeah. What is your favorite thing about working with each other? Let's get let's get serious. Um I was like a really fresh out of the womb actor um, in terms of like, I, this was like literally one of my first ever professional acting gigs. So I get to work with Annie, who is like so talented and so like grounded and so like great at developing characters really helped me like be a better actor. So I think like that's my favorite part is like every time I acted with you, I became better. So yeah. Aww. Oh, this is sweet. <laughs> um, I think, and, and I think this does speak to the fact that this was your first job at a theater school, but Caitlin comes to everything so incredibly prepared, and it's amazing. It's like your the research and the care that goes into, and the thought, the thoughtfulness that goes into your character development was really incredible to be a part of, and we got to create those characters together. So I, I really couldn't, I couldn't reimagine doing that with any anyone else. Um, and then also on top of that, <laughs> you put up with me <laughs> and my shenanigans, and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun we on such, set. We had such jokes. Yeah. yeah, it was good times. We were never doing what we were supposed to. No, no, never. <laughs> never. <laughs> Did you guys meet each other during audition rounds, or like how... Like, can you can you talk yes, about yes, that about about first impressions maybe or, or how that went? Or? Scared to death of Annie. <laughs> I met you. You had just come out of like auditioning for Carmilla at the like the callbacks and then you just like walked over to me tucked in your shirt and went can we run lines and I went <laughs> and then we ran the lines and I just remember being like this person is like doing something so cool with this character but also I don't think I can get a word out with her because like oh my god how do you she's so beautiful and also intimidating so that was my first impression was Well, my first, I mean, my first recollection was actually in the, in the callback itself. And I just, re like, it's funny that you, you say that because um, I remember sort of being like, I don't know what to do with this lady, this Perry lady, Perry lady. I was like, I don't know what to do with this character. It's a little confusing. Um, and sort of like wishy-washy. And then when I, when you and I just played out that scene together with Kate, I, I found it. Immediately, so that really does speak to chemistry and sort of the magic that is chemistry between you know scene partners. Um, did, did you see other LaFontaines? I didn't read with a single other La. Oh. No, I didn't. I don't think I read with a single other Perry. Yeah, because we the best. <laughs> <laughs> so switching to a little bit of fun, um, you get chosen for a reality show. What reality show are you going on? Um, pre my girlfriend, are you the one? Cause like the queer season was awesome and I'm a hot mess. I would be so bad on that show, it would be great. <laughs> oh my God, this is my actual greatest nightmare because I'm like maybe one of the most private people walking around <laughs> on the planet and I don't watch reality TV. So I, I just, I, I, 
it would be like, like find a hermit in the woods. And I would, you'd see me like running around, like trying to camo myself in like tree leaves or something like that. And being like, no, wait, leave me alone. I think I'd pay to watch that. Okay, cool. If you can find me. <laughs> and so if Laugh or Perry were on a reality show, what do you think they'd go on? A great Br British, British bake baking show. Yeah. yeah, against each other. Sure. Yeah. Laugh would go on a great British you'd like yes. Bill, show. You'd be on some like Bill Nye. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Laugh would make the worst things you've ever seen on the Great British Breaking Show, but they would all be experiments. They would be running on the judges. It would be illegal. It would be great. I could see you guys doing like that, that like Halloween wars. Actually, you know where you 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 need to one of them one of you has to bake and the other has to design like. That's Something good. gruesome. Yeah. I like your answer. Also, can you imagine Laugh and Perry on The Amazing Race? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Trying to tackle amazing. like the natural elements together, like running across the globe. That'd be jokes. Can you imagine Laugh trying to drive? <laughs> yeah. I think you might end up in the wrong place or taking the wrong plane, maybe. Or just going on a shopping trip, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, you know they give you money on The Amazing Race, but you just go shop with it instead. <laughs> we good? Okay, so what would you say is either the favorite insult you got to deliver on the show or favorite insult you heard on the show? There were lots of great insults. I mean, I'm not gonna repeat it. I think most people probably know, but there was a, there was a time that was silent on camera for me but Spencer, our director, I was supposed to be grossing out Elise and Kaylin, and, and they were close to the camera and I was in the background as the dean and uh, I got to just, uh, just let, her, let her rip. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, I'm gonna choose that exact same thing because like, the stuff she said was messed up. <laughs> like, it was messed up. It was great. <laughs> okay. Which Carmela character would you want by your side if you were trying to stop an evil death goddess from releasing hell on earth? Who would you want to fight with? Mel. 100%. Just because Gertrude is the best. So your answer is actually Gertrude, not G Mel. Yeah, uh, like Mel, but like Hold holding Gertrude. Oh, you La and Fontaine like, wouldn't want to. No, Laugh would not touch. No, Laugh would like <laughs> impale themselves if they touch something like that. Absolutely not. Poke the other eye out. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd probably want Maddie close by. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's wily. She is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's, I think we're switching gears, I think. Are we? I think so. <laughs> Was there anything else you wanted to yeah. say just while you have everyone here? No pressure. Thank you so much yeah. for Thank being you. here. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't know like what this means to all of us and what every single one of you means to every single one of us. Like you have changed our lives for the better and it's it's all because of you. So just thank you for existing and thank you for being here. Yeah, that's I think that's what we want to say. Yeah. Good answer.